All right. Um, and uh, you can see Kirk Swenson is also on the call, but it's, uh, I think, very early in the morning where he is on the west coast of the United States. And um, our collaborator, Leslie, is um, off in New Zealand right now where it's uh, very much the middle of the night. So she uh, declined to to present today. But, okay. <laughs> um, but I'm located in uh, close to Boston um, in Massachusetts, USA, uh, also close to where our organization, the Concord Consortium, is located in, in Concord, Massachusetts. Um, so our, uh, we're talking about the use of JS Graph in this collaborative environment that we have. Um, just a word about our organization, the Concord Consortium. It's a, it's a nonprofit uh, educational research development and service organization. Um, and it's around 30 years old at this point um, and has always had the mission of uh, improving education, especially education in the STEM fields, science, engineering, technology, math, um, through the use of technology. So um, we've had a lot of uh, work funded by the U.S. National Science Foundation, among other organizations, looking at how we can use technology to um, to just improve the uh, educational experience for students by doing, you know, giving them activities that they can do, things that they can try out, um, things like bringing uh, electronically connected uh, temperature or distance probes into the classroom so you can, you know, try out experiments and gather data. Um, and a lot of, uh, a lot of free and open source um, software that we've created and uh, and uh, kind of online tools and things like that. So where does uh, JSX Graph fit into that whole picture? Um, we've integrated it into a platform that we call Clue. Oh, I'm sorry, I was meant to be uh, sharing my slides and I've totally forgot to do that. Um, yes, we can see, oh. yes. Thank you. Can you see those? Okay, <laughs> sorry. I was looking at them, so I assumed everyone else was too. Um, all right, so Concord Consortium. And uh, yeah, wanted to talk about uh, this platform that's called the Collaborative Learning User Environment, or CLUE. Um, which is really a, a platform that gives us a flexible way to make both make curriculum available and provide this collaborative workspace for students, kind of all integrated into one online tool. And it's in use by various different projects um, that we've done in collaboration with different universities and organizations. Um, so it's really like many tools in one. Each each project can choose what pieces of Clue to make available, how to configure it, um, can create pages of curriculum, um, then and then uh, accounts for the teachers and students who need to use it. And but all those spaces have these key features that the platform provides, which is you know a variety of tools, this collaborative space. Um, the ability to reuse material, copy things around, uh, track the history, and and provide this authored curriculum. Uh, so this is what it looks like. Um, just an example page from Clue. There's the curriculum that's being provided on the left-hand side of the screen, and the student's workspace is on the right-hand side of the screen, though they can... Uh, you know, hide either one of those if they need to focus on one or the other. Um, but you can see that it's kind of got the same tools available on both sides. You've got these um, geometry constructions, which are where JSX graph comes in, as well as tables or text areas or formulas. 
Um, and the student is always able to uh, drag anything over from the curriculum into their workspace where it becomes something that they can edit and play with. Um, you can do the same with uh, your peers' work uh, if they choose to share it, which I'll, I'll show later on. Um, within both of those spaces, there are a whole variety of tools available. Um, so there are things like text and images that can be there. Also more complex things like a drawing, drawing tool or tables. Um, we have this data flow programming language that's built in, which can connect to sensors connected to your computer. Um, and also uh, like little robotic uh, machinery for some of the, some of the uh, projects that use this actually use it to control um control uh robot claws and things like that and there are more tiles than what's pictured here we have uh, graphs simulations in some cases number lines but we're going to zoom into this uh, which is what we call the coordinate grid tile because that's where a jsx graph lives um and like the other kinds of tiles it can be part of the curriculum or it can be created uh, by students from scratch. And if it is in the curriculum, the students can or drag a copy of that construction over into their workspace and play around, make changes to it. Uh, so we'll come back to this in a minute, but let me just highlight the key features that I think might be of interest to this group. Um, and we'll go into more detail on, on all of these. But First of all, we've uh, layered on a student-friendly user interface on top of JSX Graph. Um, I think a lot of the use cases of JSX Graph are probably that a teacher or an expert of some sort creates a geometrical construction that may have some interactivity to it. Uh, but we really wanted students to be able to start from scratch and build their own diagram of whatever sort. Um, so we'll show that UI. We have the notion of data linking. Um, so you can bring in a, a set of points from a table um, or from a formula, and then use those to, to uh, start your geometric construction. Uh, we have some real-time collaboration, so groups can work together, and full history tracking of um, how, how a diagram is modified. So let's jump into each of those. The user interface, um, this is a you know, snapshot of what it looks like. There's a kind of simple toolbar. So you can um, create a point or create a, a number of points by clicking on places. Um, we have a polygon tool that lets you connect those points together um, or create a polygon from scratch. Similarly, a circle tool that lets you draw draw a circle based on existing points or creating new ones. Um, you can link an image that sits in the background. You can duplicate things, change their color. Um, there's a lot hidden behind this um, labeling tool because you can label both uh, angles as well as coordinates of points or just have a text label on points or polygons or circles. Um, you can also label not shown in this picture, but you can label the area or area of a polygon or the length of a line. Um, the next icon is data linking, which we'll talk about in detail in a sec. Um, zoom in, zoom out, fit all, and deleting objects. Um, and then there's a couple of global things. Um, you can resize the tile, move it around in relation to other tiles you've got in your workspace, undo and redo. Um, and we've also got a tool that lets you create arrows that link objects in your workspace. So if you wanted to say, you know, provide more detail about, you know, some object in your geometric construction, you could uh, just draw an arrow that links it out to uh, kind of anything. Could be a, a table or a cell in a table or a drawing that you made. Um, so provide a lot of a lot of flexibility for, for students, and then all of those tools also available to curriculum authors.
Uh, so second big uh, thing I wanted to highlight is this notion of data linking. Um, so in this case, we're showing an example where we've created a table of data and then linked it to this coordinate grid tile. Um, so each x, y point becomes a point on the graph. Uh, in this case, we've got three series of y values. So we've created three different um, sets of points in different colors for the um, representing three columns of this table um, with the common x values in the first column. Um, um, so you can imagine some of the uses of this um, the, where if you want to talk about um, scaling and proportional reasoning, um, the columns in the table can be generated by a formula. So you can see what happens if you, you know, double the values, or in this case, we're you know, providing a fixed offset. So you can see that that translates the position of the uh, object that's being drawn. Um, so this example from the Connected Mathematics project that we worked with, which is really about supporting students' math development um, via an exploratory process where they can you know, reason, try things out, uh, try to reflect on the results and communicate the results. So it was a good fit there because we can show these multiple connected representations of the same concepts, whether it's in the space of formulas or tables or, or uh, geometrical graphs. And that CMP project was a uh, collaboration with Michigan State University. Thanks, Kirk. Yeah. Um, so a lot of a lot of collaborations that have resulted in this, uh, you know, kind of iterating on this in this uh, environment over time and, and adding pieces. Um, <clears throat> So second big picture point, um, we support real-time collaboration. And what I'm showing up here is this, um, what we call a four-up view, which is a central feature of Clue. Um, as a student, you don't have to share your work, but you're in encouraged to share it with a group of other students. And each student uh, in this view, one of these students would be me. Um, on the others, there could be two or three. This might be a fourth student who hasn't yet started or hasn't uh, chosen to share their work. Um, and you know, my tile would be editable and I can be making changes there. I'm just looking at what the other students are doing. It's not, we didn't try to solve the problem of like multi, multiple users simultaneously modifying the same diagram. Um, but uh, I can see what they're doing. I can also um, grab any of their tiles and pull them into my workspace and they can do the same two things. So I could, uh, you know, take this table from my uh, group mate and drag it into my workspace and modify it in some way. And then they could drag it back if they wanted to. Um, one thing to note, and I'll come back to this a little later, these are uh, essentially the, the workspaces scaled down into quarter size by a, a CSS transformation, which was something that we uh, did encounter some challenges with getting that to, to display properly with JSX graph. Um, but uh, a happy ending to that story we'll get to in a moment. Um, third, um, Big picture uh, thing I wanted to show is this notion of history tracking. Uh, so let me just play this. Um, so in this view, they're showing a teacher view here. Um, i just pause it for a second. Um, what you're seeing is the teacher looking at some student work. Um, and by clicking this history button, uh, then you get this uh, slider that you can move around or you can just kind of play forward what the student did. So I'm just watching what the student did. Um, and you can see every change that they made to their diagram 
this is a silly example, of course, but it's, uh, you know, certainly something that we encourage that uh, you can be silly with these tools. You can just play around. Um, that's a good way to learn uh, how to, you know, both how to use the tools and, you know, maybe gets you thinking about how is that uh, graph of data actually connected to this picture that, that I've drawn. Um, and so you can just kind of scrub back and forth in the history and uh, as well as examine in detail each step that they took along the way, um, which can be useful for students. I think probably even more useful for teachers to see, uh, you know, teachers always want students to show their work and this tool is kind of doing that, uh, doing that for you in some sense. And of course, when we're doing a research project, being able to see the steps along the way is crucial to being able to understand the, the thought process of the students and, and whether we've uh, uh, give, given them what we wanted to give them in terms of uh, what the curriculum is providing. So um, just to summarize some of the benefits we got from including JSX Graph, um, being able to write our code in terms of the actual geometry objects. A lot of the other kinds of tiles are um, just generating, you know, bare SVG primitives, um, but this lets us, um, you know, when we talk about a polygon, it's, it's a polygon and JSX graph knows that that depends on points and that moving the points is gonna change where the lines are and the lengths of those lines and what the angles are. So if we have labels on those things, we don't have to kind of figure out all those calculations ourselves. So it simplifies things a lot for, for the kind of logic we need to have uh, in our software. Um, it can calculate the, the lengths and areas for us and manage the relationships between those objects. So, you know, it knows that if we delete a point, then the line that was using that point as an endpoint has to go away and the polygon gets updated. Um, and the fact that um, JSX graph is kind of actively being improved and updated and the development team is responsive has been hugely helpful to us. Um, we had been stuck at version like one four or something for a while um, due to the problem I mentioned with displaying inside the the, CX, the CSS transformed regions that are scaled down into that four up view. Um, but when we eventually uh, actually reported that bug and uh, we had come up with a, a, a patch that, that solved our use case, but we very quickly got a response from the development team uh, with uh, a much better solution than the one we had come up with in our patch. And I think within a few weeks, there was a, a new version of JSX Graph out that, that solved that bug. So, you know, big, big thank you to the team for that. And uh, just helping this be a, a really useful part of our, our whole s system. Um, a couple of places where we encountered challenges. Um, uh, Clue is developed in React, and <laughs> um, mo you know this is a very common story. But uh, you know, integrating other libraries into React is often challenging. Um, JSX Graph has uh, its own state internally, um, and it has a model for how that state gets updated. So you have to kind of create the glue that um, maps React's update model onto JSX Graph's update model, um, either kind of tracking and applying the changes um, through the update methods that JSX Graph provides, or uh, just kind of rebuilding the entire diagram whenever there's a change. Um, and we use both of those strategies in different places. Um, so a bit of a challenge, but a, but a solvable one. Um, uh, also TypeScript we use throughout, um, and this has been, I think, rapidly improving. 
So when we upgraded from 1.4 to 1.8, um, the TypeScript integration was much better, but there's still some gaps we had to fill with our own uh, file of definitions. Um, but that did get much simpler, I think, is, is improving over time. Um, I would love to be able to just give everything a CSS class so that we can do our coloring and styling of, um, you know, the, the colors and line widths and uh, opacity and everything else through CSS. Uh, but I think at the moment only text elements support supplying a CSS class from code. Um, so that would be a nice improvement if, if every element could support that. Um, then I wrote inflexible layering model, which may be a bit, a bit harsh, but I think CSS or JSX graph makes a, a normally reasonable assumption that um, if you click on a you click on a spot in the in the X Y space that maybe there are several elements um, underneath it. It assumes if there's a point there, you always want to interact with the point. And if there is a line there, you know, second second priority would be go to interacting with the line, and only after that interacting with the polygon or circle or other shape. Um, in our case, the points that come from a table are not really something you can um, you can move around because they're fixed by the the data set of the table. Um, so we uh, kind of rewrote a lot of the built-in mouse handlers to support a different model of saying, well, if it's one of these points that's in a read-only class that you can't interact with it, we're going to ignore the fact that you're clicking there and you because what you really probably want to do is, you know, move the uh, move the the overlapping circle around in this case, or the or the polygon. Um, so that was one one area where things got a little more complex than than maybe they they would have to be. Um, so final note, uh, Clue is is free to use. Um, it's, uh, as I said, mostly something that we use to kind of create environments for particular projects. Um, so there's not, it's not like just a tool you can jump into, but uh, there are an activity or two that if people are interested, I can put uh, notes into the Moodle on, on how to access that and create an account. Um, but the software is is open source if anyone wants to look at how we've done this integration, it's all out there on GitHub. Um, and, uh, you know, something that's been uh, through through many collaborators and, and many projects has been growing and will continue to expand over time. So, uh, and we're always glad to work with uh, other open source partners. So uh, very happy for, uh, JSX graph and, and what it's been able to uh, allow us to do here. So and that's there was all. A question, there was a question in the chat about, is this related to CodeApp? And uh, not directly related, but it is the from the same organization. We have several other projects in addition to Clue um, and CodeApp is one of our other larger uh, platform projects. And there is some shared code between the two, but perhaps not as much as we might like. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, there's other things going on at uh, Concord besides uh, just Clue and CodeApp and so on and so forth. 